And uh, he was Deke at the time. And he cared for Kevin and them greatly. He, he would jump on their tail. <laughs> he wasn't like he was now, but he meant well. He meant well. Because he cared about how they would turn out. And we should never um, lose the fact that God put men in the church. You need men in the church. You need men in the church. We have to find a way for God to raise up more men in this church. Amen. So we are so grateful today for what God has done. My wife uh, got a little sick, so I want you to stay in prayer with her. Her nose started bleeding and um, the pressure probably was up. But here's my take on life. I'm in a position you won't see me get nervous or scared. Because whatever God allows, I accept. And what we learned last week, God cannot what? By his stripes we are what? By his son's death we are what? Saved. And been given the power and the gift of the Holy Spirit. So this morning, my prayer is uh, that you hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. There's a lot of philosophies out there, but in the end, the Bible says there's only one way to God, and that's through Jesus Christ. I would beg to differ with anybody. I would discourse with anybody on that subject. But before I go into my prayer and you guys begin to greet, I want to express to you this morning, anyone in here, please hear my heart. Some people are afraid to admit, but there is a spiritual world that the church has become silent on in a sense. Some people are embarrassed to even let you know what they're going through or what they're facing. If you're in this church and you're dealing with mental illness, they call it mental illness. But basically what it is, is a spiritual attack of the enemy. Society of itself don't know how to deal with it. There are, there are different levels or stages that this can go through until a person becomes so consumed by that spirit that you will find them then living outside, not bathing, living on grates and rails as church folk, and people who are supposed to be full of power, walk by. It starts right here. It starts right here. I have talked to people, and it's real. They hear voices. There are people that I have dealt with that have felt things on their bodies. And to you and to others who don't understand, you may think that they're not right in their mind. No, they're very right in their mind. Psychiatrists try to deal with it from their point of view. But I'm telling you what, God is a healer. The Bible says there was a man in, the, in this garden and he, nobody, could, nobody could bind him and nobody could, could hold him. And he broke chains. And when Jesus came, and the man had spirits in him. And Jesus cast out the spirits. And when the spirits went out, they said the village came to see the man who everybody walked by, nobody paid attention to. And they saw him sitting in his right mind. God is a God that would give you back your right mind. So if you're afraid to tell somebody what you're going through, or you're afraid to tell somebody what you're hearing, you can talk to me after church. God didn't call me to be a pastor just so I can be an orator and speak some words. He called to demonstrate the power of God in this place for deliverance. And we have had people in here that had some mental challenges and God has healed them. Can somebody say amen? amen. So nobody in this church, not one soul, can go out of here. If you choose to, if you choose to, we won't put you on blast, but I know that God will deliver you 
listen to me, from the voices that agonize you in your sleep. Voices that tell you to do things. Feelings that you may feel. God is a healer. He didn't die so you can just get saved and just have a bum life. He saved you that you might have life and have it what? Abundantly. I'm going to pray this prayer and then we're going to greet. Come on, stand to your feet. I'm at a different place with God now. I'm at a different place. And uh, I want to stay at that place. I want to stay at that place. Father, we bless you today and thank you for your Holy Spirit. We thank you for the blood of Jesus that cleanses us from our sin. We thank you that we have been given the pathway to come to the throne of grace boldly and make our requests known. Forgive us for things that we have done as we have taken communion to remember your death, your burial, and your resurrection. I pray this morning that the power of God and the Holy Spirit help us this morning. Give us the guidance that we need. Give us the strength that we may stand in the days to come. I ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, my Savior. And Lord, as Paul said in Galatians, I'm crucified with Christ. He said, as I say, nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not frustrate the grace of God for if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead. <coughs> Father, touch every heart, every mind. May this message be clear to the hearing. May you, by the Holy Spirit, give them understanding. May you bless those and strengthen those that are weak and those that fight against the very God that's trying to help them. Cause them to see past their situation and realize that you can't lie. Help them to understand that you're bringing us to a level and a place of perfection. That, Father, you're going to send a son. and You're getting us ready to meet him. For we are the bride and he is the groom. Therefore, we submit and humble ourselves today under the hands and the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Fulfill us, refresh us, and keep us this morning. May not the word of God fall on false ground, but may it fall on fallow ground, that it may bring forth life to the hearer, strength to the weak, clarity to those that don't understand, and understanding by the Holy Spirit. We thank you this morning and give you praise. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, Amen. Go around and greet your neighbor as we prepare to receive the word of God in Jesus' name.
Um, give me a list of stuff I need for the drum. Okay. Make okay. it up for me so I know so I know what I need. Okay. And uh, next time you come, I'm gonna have it all set up. Okay. It's been dead for a minute. I told you when I was like, hey, what I had to say like, man, that's all we got. But I, you know, I'm always, I can always make it. We work. had a guy, we had a guy come in. We had a guy come in, but he was homeless. Okay, everyone, hallelujah. Thank you so much for greeting. Hallelujah, thank you, Lord. I want everybody to get situated. Hallelujah. As we allow the Holy Spirit to give us what God wants us to have. Please pray my prayer, my prayer that everybody will receive today. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. No, no. I'm blessed. I'm truly blessed to have my family. Your, your family, my family. Everybody's, I want you situated as we go into the Word of God, and as the Holy Spirit speaks to us this morning. It's hard sometimes when you're a preacher listening to a preacher. So sometimes when preachers are preaching, they're preaching at the same time. And, and you have to allow the Holy Spirit and listen to him. You may miss what he has. Amen. We're here to teach you, to get you prepared to meet Jesus. Amen. That's the whole object of this ministry, is to help you to get ready to meet Jesus and to have a good life while you're living here. Hey, Mickey. Turn your Bibles to Matthew 6, 19th chapter. We're going to start and read the 16th and the 17th verse. Our subject has been for the last couple of Sundays a revelation of God. And there has been three subtitles to each. One had its own special title. Today, the subtitle of this one is God is Good. The liturgical response would be all the time. And my question to you is, really? You may not understand why I said that, but you will, within a few, understand why I said that. God is good. And my response to you in a liturgical way is, really? Let's take a look at that. In Matthew, the 19th chapter, the 16th verse, and the Bible says, Behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I, may in, that I may have eternal life? And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? 
There is none good but one, that is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. The church's response, sinner's response, has always been when they heard the phrase, God is good. Even people who don't serve God will respond and say, all the time, God is good. My question is, how do you know that God is good all the time? How do you define good? Good all the time. This man came up to Jesus and said, good master. Why did he refer to Jesus as good master? And if you go back and read, you will find he referred to Jesus as good masters because from a human position, he looked at what Jesus did and said it was good. He opened the blinded eyes. That's good. He healed the lame. Good. He looked at what Jesus did in filling the 5,000 and he said, that's a good thing. So he looked at the crowd of people that was following him and he said, after he called him a good master, what good thing shall I do? Thinking that to get into heaven, he had to do a good thing. People come to church thinking, you know, I was praying this morning and just thinking, why are you here? Is it out of obligation? Or did you come here because you wanted to worship God? See, if you don't have a revelation of God, you would treat God like you treat human beings. And we do. Even the best laid Christian and the best uh, 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 knowledgeable individual at times treat God like he's human. You base God's goodness on what he does. Most people don't have a relationship with God. They have a relationship, you heard me say this, with the institution. They come to church because your friends are here or your family is here, but not, not many really come to give God the glory that's due unto his name. Glory in its essence of Greek means great praise. Why did he refer to Jesus as good? Because he referred to Jesus as what he did. Why do we refer to God as good? Because we refer to God as good because we compare him to humans. God gave me a car. God gave me a house. God gave me this. And, and so we refer to God as good because of what he done. People who have that mindset look at God from a human position. You say he's only good because of what he done. When is something considered good? When we get pleased. I got a raise on my job that was good. My child graduated from whatever grade he or she was in and we call that good. We refer to God and we treat God like human. That's why it's so easy to fall out of love with him because that's the only way you see him is human. And you refer to him as good only because of what he done. Really? God is good all the time. Really? When God killed the firstborn and a deaf angel came through the city, was God good? When God killed Abedu and Nehu, when they offered a strange fire in the temple, was God good? When David slept with Bathsheba and prayed all night and fasted and he, his son got sick and he died, was God good? When Daniel served God and prayed, and went into his place and talked to God, and, and he wound up in a lion's den. Was God good?
when the Hebrew boys refused to serve the false god of Nebuchadnezzar. Listen to this. The king said, when you hear the sound of these instruments, I want you to bow down to my God. This is when you got relationship with God. This is when you know God. This is when you understand the goodness of God, because in essence, we don't understand the goodness of God because we make God human. God is not human. We learned last week what God cannot do. What God cannot do? Lie. No, you're so weak with it. What cannot God do? Lie. God cannot lie. God is not human. He doesn't have human attributes. As Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had a revelation about who God was. Because one thing we do know is that uh, outside of your understanding, not going on oh, what you think good is from a human position, but God is good. Even here, God is good. I'll explain so you can get a full understanding in a minute. But the king said you shall bow down. These three Hebrew boys answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. Talking about relationship. Listen to this. He said, if it be so, our God, who's God? Our God, our God whom we what? Serve. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Whom we what? Serve. Service requires obedience. Service require commitment. When they say serve, they meant to obey. They meant to believe in. They meant to, to trust in. They say the God whom we want serve, they say we know he is able to deliver us from the burning, burning fire furnace. They knew that. This is when you have a relationship with God. Some of you guys been praying. Some of you guys been asking God for stuff, and it hasn't happened yet, and I'm going to show you why. Some of you are not ready for the answer. Some of you crumble when testing time comes. They say we know he's able to deliver us from the burning, burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of the hand, O king. Relationship, understanding this, this, this God we serve who's not human. He said, but if not, I love it. Be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. He, 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 they made a distinction to the, to the king of, the, uh, of that kingdom at that time and said, we know God is able. But the question is, is we fail when he don't. Is God still good? They had, they had, they knew that God was able, but can you imagine being thrown into the fire? Is God still good? Is God still good? All the time, when you start going through, is God still good? You say yes, but a lot of your attitudes and, and a lot of your responses say that's a lie. Revelation 20, 15 says, those that were not found written in the book of life was cast in the lake of fire. Is God still good? When you see your prayer seem to, to go unanswered and you done cried all night and, and still there's no manifestation of what you pray, is God still good? You lost your job. You lost your place of, of, of residence where you live. The job laid you off, and, and now you're trying to figure out how you're going to make it. Is God still good? We all say yes, because that's the right religious response. I'm not looking for a religious response. 
You got to have this in your spirit, and I'm going to tell you why here in a minute. I just want to give you some examples. I'm trying to get you to understand the severity of understanding when I say God is good. When, you're, when you have been promised healing and have not experienced the promise of healing yet, is God still good? Here's the last one. When death occurs, after you done prayed all night for the individual and you done pleaded with God and you done asked God to let the deaf angel pass over your loved one, it could be your mother, it could be your brother, it could be your sister, it could be someone you love, and they die, is God still good? Why do you call God good? Why do you call him good? Most people call God good because of what he's done. We miss the whole understanding of who God is, that he's not human. God don't respond like we do to a sorrow. God doesn't respond like we do to tears. God doesn't respond to the flesh. God responds to the spirit. Why? Because he's what? Spirit. You find yourself frustrated with church. You find yourself frustrated with people. You find yourself frustrated with life because you're trying to do this thing on your own. And there is some accomplishments you can make without God. But in the end, there's some things you can never get from money. You can never get from relationship. And that's the peace that passes all understanding. Nobody says God is good when they're going through. Nobody worship God when they're going through. It's always after you done come out and after you done, you, done, you, done, you done told God where you at and after you done asked God where you been. God ain't been nowhere. He's at the place he always will be. We don't have the patience to wait. Most people. Christians refer to God as good only because of what he does. Hallelujah. God want to break that mold. He want to get you out of that because you can't have a real relationship with a spiritual God based on flesh. Hallelujah. Everybody goes around. God is good all the time. But once something happens in your life, once you lose a job, once somebody dies, who bears the brunt? God does. You stop praying. You stop coming to church. You stop praying. You stop believing. You stop working or, or walking by faith because you're all caught up in yourself and the word has gone out the window. Oh, we all going to get whipped in here today. Because God wants to bring you to a level of what? Perfection. God wants you to get out yourself. Somebody say hallelujah. I don't care how long you've been in church and how, how much words you know. Let me tell you something. Perfection requires putting you in an uncomfortable place for you to trust God and not trust in yourself. I know y'all not hearing me this morning, I, 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 and I'm glad, but I want you to hear the Holy Spirit. You, you, you can't play with this thing. You can't treat God like he's human. It said, they that worship him must worship him how? Spirit and what? What happens to him? Turn your Bibles to Matthew, the 13th chapter. You need to bring your Bible. You need to have your Bible. I don't care if you got a phone. I don't care if you got a piece of paper with some scriptures on it. But you need to have your Bible. Amen. God's trying to talk to us in here. Amen. He's trying to help you to get through when things start happening. Amen. He's trying to help you to face life when the bottom falls out, that you don't, you don't fall with it. God trying to get us to this place where he can get you to a place where you're strong enough to stand so you can help your brother and your sister. You can't help it when both of y'all are all jacked up. You're going to pray for somebody and your life is just as jacked up as theirs. 
God is good, but you don't understand God's goodness. I, I'm not going to rush to that point because I want you to get this. I understand because I studied it and the Holy Spirit revealed it to me. What is the goodness of God? In Matthew, the 13th chapter, the 19th verse. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to rush. Tell your neighbor, pastor, I'm not trying to rush. Because you, 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 you ain't going to be able to call me. I don't have no magic wand. My name is not Harry Potter. I just can't say be healed and it happens. Unless the Holy Spirit releases it, it won't happen. Thirteen, nineteen. Look what he says. He says, when one hears the word of the what? Kingdom and understand it, it not, then cometh the wicked one and catches away that which was sown where? In his heart. This is he who received the seed by the wayside. You just in church and, and you ain't got no relationship with God because you see God as human. That's those that see God as human. Only time I need God is when I want something. When I start going through, I don't need God. You cry, you call your friends. If your friends or your parents are the first ones you call before you pray, then they are your gods, not God. You shouldn't ask for an answer until the Holy Spirit releases you to, to look for it. I know that that don't make sense to a lot of people. He said, 20, but he that receiveth the seed into stony places, the same is he that heareth the word, and with joy he does what? Receive it. Oh, you get so happy about, if I start talking about abundance, and I talk about, start talking about getting some money, and I start, I start about prospering in a new house and getting a new car, and all you got to do is sow a seed, everybody get ecstatic and get happy, and everybody get joyful. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. You only give because you're expecting, you're looking to get. The world's the same way. Amen. Ain't got no relationship with God. Ain't got no relationship with him. So when things happen and when the bottom falls out, I'm trying to tell you, you got to have a revelation of God. Who he is? Who is he? Look what he says. He said, yet has he not root where? In himself. What happens? But he, he stays for a while. Here it is. But when tribulation, come on, tell your neighbor, tribulation, tribulation. or persecution arises because of the word. Come on. Because of what? The word. God's going to try you. Because of the word. Not because of anything other than the word of God to bring you to perfection. God wants you to know he's not human. Persecution sometimes comes because of the what? Word. Paul said we made a spectacle of people laugh at us because we don't move on our own. We don't try to make something up. We wait and we trust God even when it's uncomfortable. Tribulation or persecution arises. He said because of the word, by and by, they are offended. When tribulation comes because of the word. Is God still good? I've been going to church, and I've been serving, and I've been doing this, and it seems like the more I do, the worse things get. You forget the word. You, what did you tell God? You told God, I'll serve you no matter what. You said, God, no matter what comes in my life, I'm going to serve you. No matter what transpires, I'm not going to sin against you, God. I'm going to love you. And what did we do when tribulation and persecution come because of the word's sake? We fall to our old life because we don't know him. We don't know what it is to worship God. You think, no, collectively we come in here, I, I come in here purposely to meet my God with you. To give him glory. Glory means in the Greek, great praise, adoration. More than I would give a human being. He said they're offended. What is God's goodness? I only got a few verses. 
Go to Psalms 103 and 10. Come on. Psalm 103 and 10. Everybody, I know I can feel it. You ready to get out of church and do what? What you going to do? Life going to hit you right in the face. We spend very little time in church. I heard, y'all, I heard John Jenkins say something that I'm going to use this morning. John Jenkins said there was, Jesus had two types of people. He had the multitude and he had the disciples. He said the multitude are those who only come to church on Sunday. But the disciples come to church on Tuesday and Wednesday and Sunday. Some just belong to the multitude. They're not disciples. Ow. I'll say it for you. Ow. But when trouble comes, I was talking to a person who goes to Glen Arden Baptist Church and they said, Tuesday Bible study at one of the largest churches in the area that holds about four or 5,000 people. Only filled up the first two rows on Bible study night. Out of 5,000 people, two rows. They say on prayer at Glen Island Baptist Church, prayer night, only consists of the first 50 seats of the middle section. But Sunday morning, there's four services. And each service is full to the overflowing because they don't know him. You treat God like a human. God's goodness, Psalms 103 and 10. He has not dealt with us after our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. Somebody say, God's goodness. goodness. Go to Romans 5 and 8. God is good all the time. And I'm going to break it down to you in a minute so you can understand exactly what I'm saying. God's not human. You got to understand and know who he is. In Romans 5 and 8, it says, but God, somebody say, but God, God. commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. I'm talking about God's goodness. I'm talking about God's favor. I'm talking about God didn't reward us according to what we've done. Even when we got saved, we were still, some of us, still sinning, and yet God didn't reward us according to our sin. Somebody say, God is good. All the time, God is good. That's just a couple of the things that I want to share with you this morning about God's goodness. But let me tell you something. Who is he? Who is God to you? Some people have made up their own gods. Your God takes vacation. He goes down to Myrtle Beach and sit. That's human God. The pastor don't preach or the pastor don't come to church, you don't come. That's a human God. You only give time for God or time for God's work when it's convenient. That's a human God. When I get sick, the first thing I do is I boo-hoo and I cry. That's a human God. I got a God. I got a God. He's not human. I got a God that don't respond respond like that. He responds to my spirit. Somebody say hallelujah. 
The Bible says that God, the Holy Spirit searches, searches the heart of man, and he knows the intent of the heart. He knows your motive for what you do. But I understand that you don't understand what God, who God is. Let me, when we learn, when we learn to worship God, not for, here it is, I'm giving you the key right now. When we learn to worship God for not what he has done, but we worship him for who he is. When we understand he's the creator of the universe, when we understand that he sits high and looks low. We understand that the angels bow before his throne. When we understand the moon and the stars and the sun operate according to his word. When we understand that God is God and he's not human. When you can understand that, you'll have more of a respect. You have more of a worship. You have more of a reverence when you understand who he is. He's not human. He is God. He should be worshiped as God and God alone and no one else. He should not be compared to any human being. He should not be compared to a rock. He should not be compared to a nationality nor a color. He is God all by himself. And until you worship him for who he is, you would never understand who he is. He's God. He's not black. He's not white. He's not Asian. He's no nationality. He's God. And until you learn to worship him for who he is and respect him for who he is, you will always treat him as human. Your faith is, you say, is in God? No. If you see God as human, yeah, no, you don't have the faith that pleases God. He's not human. He's God. In the beginning was the word. The word was and the word was, and the word was made what? God. He's, he's not human. You want God to respond to your needs and your, your hurts and your pain like a human being will once. You want God to hug you. You want God to cry with you and tears run down his eyes. But I'm here to tell you, that's a human God. How do my God comfort me? Thy word. No, let me read it. Let me read it. Let me read it so you can, get it, so you can hear what I'm saying. I'm trying to get you to understand that we're not worshiping God and calling God good because of what he's done. We're calling God good because of who he is. If God never does another thing for us, if he never does another healing, if he never opened up another blinded eyes, if I lost 10 jobs, he's still God. And you know who he is. You'll keep on worshiping. You'll keep on dancing. You won't change your attitude. You won't change your position. You won't stop praying. You won't stop coming to church. You'll know. You'll keep praising him because you know who he is. When you know who he is, you'll stand up and you'll give him the praise. That's doing to his name. When you know who he is, you'll know he's God, and there is no one like him. When you know who he is, you'll fall on your face and give him the glory. That's doing to his name. When you know who he is, I don't know where that comes from, but I use it. coming to church, leaving out the same way? No. No. I'm going through. I'm going to worship him for who he is. Whether he bring me out or not, I'm going to worship him. Whether my prayers are answered, I'm going to worship him. Whether I see the manifestation or not, I'm going to praise him. You go, Come on now. Come on now. That's when you worship him for who he is. Not for what he done. Everybody come to church. You got a testimony. Yeah, I got a testimony. I want to tell you what God done. That's the only time you got a testimony. How come we don't have testimonies when I'm in the fiery furnace and I'm going through? How can't you come up here and say, look, I'm in the fiery furnace and I'm going through. God haven't answered my prayers, but I want the church to know I'm still going to praise him. I'm still going to serve him. I'm still going to worship him. I'm still going to magnify 
magnify him. My husband ain't saved yet. My children not in church yet. But I'm still going to worship him. I'm still going to praise him. I'm still going to worship him. See, when you worship him because who he is and not because of what he's done, your whole attitude about God changes. When you see something bad, you don't respond to it. You keep knowing if I keep serving and I keep worshiping, I keep praising, I keep giving him the glory. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. God responds to spirit. He doesn't respond to flesh. He responds to spirit. I don't know. You're going through right now. And you're still sitting down. That's the moment God said you need to get up. At least give God some praise. At least lift your hands. And say you haven't rewarded me. According to my sins. You haven't rewarded me. According to my rebelliousness. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. He's good. He's good because he's God Almighty. I don't worship him because of what he done. I worship him because of who he is. 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 Is there anybody in here who will worship God because of who he is? He's God Almighty over your situation. He's God Almighty over your problems. He God's almighty over your finances. When you worship him in the midst of your situation, when you don't know what to do, you need direction. You need God to help you. All you got to do in the midst of the fiery furnace is start dancing. Start praising. Start worshiping. Those of you at home watching by the internet, all you got to do in your own home is to give God glory. Get off your bed. Get off your couch. Get out your seat and start dancing because God is good all the time. He's good all the time. God is good. Come on, give him praise. Come on, give him praise. Come on and give him praise. Hallelujah. 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 You're in your comfortable spot. You're in your restful spot. You need to get out of that seat. And you need to worship him for who he is. The President Obama coming here, everybody would stand to their feet. God comes in here and everybody just don't move. He can't, he can't heal you of sickness. He can't open blinded eyes. He can't fix a broken marriage. He can't fix your finances. He can't do, but God can. We worship him for who he is. Be seated for one more minute. Just be seated. I don't want this to be an Annan moment. I want this to be a revelation moment. I don't want us to get happy and then soon we walk out the door, we lose our happiness. I'm speaking as a prophet. I speak to you as a prophet. The words you heard today will try you. Situations will arise. And you got to worship God for who he is. Not because of what you want him to do. God moves by spirit, not by flesh. In the midst of it. In the very midst of it. I decided to worship. I decided to worship. Some of us have been there. Some of you have been there. Facing foreclosure on your house. 
notice after notice, not able to pay rent, I decided to worship him for who he is. I don't have no worries. Well, he promised me in the word, my God shall supply all my needs. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Lean not to thy own. You can't do that when you see God as human. The spiritual disciple of Christ will worship in the midst of the fire. And he would dance and dance and dance. He would shout. He would worship God as the Spirit has led him into that place. And as he's worshiping, the angels come down to minister. Tears falling from his or her eyes. And they know they're in the midst of the fire. And yet they say, I give you glory. I give you praise. For my pain is not greater than your joy. I worship you. Without a crowd, without a song, without any noise, just me shuffling my feet, knowing that I might not have a place to live. I might not have a job tomorrow. I might not be able to feed my kids. I know you're sick and I've been praying, but ain't nothing happening. But in the midst of it, right in the midst of it, I don't want you to do nothing because I know you're going to meet my need. You said, I don't even have to ask. But my spirit prays and my spirit cries out. And as I dance before God, God is moving and God is working. I don't see it, but the Bible tells me that God is moving and God is working and God is going to bring me out of this. I'm not doing it because I want him to do something. Some of you worship because you want God to do something. Some of you give him praise because he done it. But can you worship him for who he is right in the midst of your situation? Let me end with this. Ah. No longer church can you bargain with God. You can't manipulate God. And tell God, if you do this, I'll do that. God don't work, don't work on contract. He works by covenant. He don't work because you say it. God knows what he got to bring you through to get you to a place that he wants you to be. You fighting God the whole way. You fighting God the whole way. God said, I know you lonely. I know you want somebody, but God said it ain't time yet. That's why some of your prayers are not answered because God knows he can't give you what you want because he gave you what you want right now. You'll leave him. You ain't ready yet. I want God to give me a million dollars. You ain't ready. I want God to give me a promotion in my job. You ain't ready. False prophets in the podium, promising people's promises that they can't keep. Giving a falsehood of a promised land that don't exist. You must learn to worship God for who he is, whether he does anything or not. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He's making me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the He restored my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name sake. Yay! 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 Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil because I worship him for who he is, not for what he can do. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil and my cup runneth over. Surely, goodness and mercy, surely, goodness and mercy, 
God's goodness is based on him being God. Not good because of what he done. Just because he's God shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Let the church say amen. amen. Take your false gods out. Kick them out. Kick what you thought you knew about God out. Some of you in here trying to please God by what you do. The Bible tells us in Romans that that's your reasonable service. God isn't impressed by what you do. God is moved by you believing who he is. In your situation, in your decision making, and when you find yourself even on top of the mountain, you need to always humble yourself even on top. So I learned to worship him for who he is. If I got to walk to catch the bus, I worship him for who he is. If I got to eat beans and hot dogs every day, I worship him for who he is. I said some things. I shared this with Eldon, his wife, and him. Fifteen years ago, I made a promise to God. It's working. And I said from the podium, out of these lips, no matter what, God, I'll serve you. The Holy Spirit reminded me of my words. If I lost a house, I always say, God, give me another one. If I lost my car, God would give me another one. I was talking big because I had. I had money in the bank. I could loan without a blink of an eye. And my words came to try me. The bank account dried up. Car broke down. House went to foreclosure. Wife got sick, quadruple bypass. This morning, the devil wanted me to look at her and say, oh my God, her nose bleeding. I just laid hands on and prayed for her. Because I know who he is. I know who he is. The Bible says I was young, was old, young, and now I'm old, but I've never seen the righteous know his seed what? God can't lie. You've been waiting on God to do some things, but you ain't been faithful. Until you get to the point where you worship God for who he is, not because of what you want him to do, God won't move on your behalf. You can ask till your eyes fall out and your tongue twist in your mouth. God said, I want you and I want you all to myself. And until you worship me for who I am and not what I can do, you won't receive what you want. You can, you can, you can quote all the scriptures you want. Today, we worship him for who he is. Come on, stand to your feet. Those of you on the internet, keep it on until I finish praying. Those of you on the internet, you at home. I don't know what you're going through. But if you can make it to some service, you need to come to at least one service a month. I'll take that. And hear what God has to say in the atmosphere where God is. God's here. Tell your neighbor, God's here. I can't see him. I can't grab him, but he's here. This is not fake. So if you're on the internet watching us, God is not human. God is God. Never been human, never will be human. He's God. And we must worship him and respect him as God. Come on, lift your hands up. Father, forgive us when we have treated you like human. Forgive us when we have doubted you. Forgive us when we couldn't find strength to believe when our children were going wayward. Our finances were all over the place. Our marriages was, was almost broken and destroyed. But 
because of your goodness. You look past our frailties and you held us up. But now you want us to know that from this moment on, we got to worship you, not for what you can do, but for who you are, God Almighty. We repent as a church and as a people and we ask for your forgiveness that from this day forward, we will not worship you as human, but we will worship you as the God that you are, the creator of the universe, the maker of mankind, who placed the stars in their place and the planets in their orbit, a God who made man from the dust of the earth and breathed in him and he became a living soul, a God who seen the pitifulness of man and even his greatest success was a disaster. His ability to please you was inappropriate and yet you sent your only begotten son, Jesus Christ, who gave his life, nailed to a cross, whipped on his back, crowned on his head, that we might come to know who you are, that you are God Almighty, and there is none beside you. We worship you today, and we honor you for who you are, God Almighty, in the name of Jesus. For every head bow, every eye close. If you're not saved, or if you're a backslider, God's arms are wide open. Yes, they are. He's not human. He's not like your mother. He's not like your brother. He's not like your sisters. He's not like your friends. God can't lie. God has open arms. He's generous. He's kind. But he also is a God of justice and a God of wrath. He's also is a God. Hallelujah that is caring and kind, but he's a God that will release his wrath upon the wicked. If you're in here today, I don't care how many times you don't come to the altar. I don't care how many times, but today is the day, God says. If you would come today to this altar, God says, I do the work. God says, I know you're thinking, well, when I get out of here, I'm not going to, God said, I got this. Today, if you're in here and you're not saved or you are a backslider, Will you come today? I know the Holy Spirit is drawing. I know the Holy Spirit is working right now. Let the Holy Spirit obey his voice. He said today is a day of salvation. Today is your day to come to Jesus. Today is your day to see God, not as human, but to see God as God. If you're in here today, come down to the altar and give Jesus Christ your life. Not the church, not the denomination, not the pastor. For God Almighty. If there's anybody here today, if there's anybody here today that's not saved, or you're a backslider, and God's arms are wide open, would you come? Would you come to Jesus today? Don't let this moment pass. Don't let it pass. Don't let it pass. I break the hold of the enemy. He has no hold on your mind. He has no hold on your body. You're free today. All you got to do is come. If you feel like you're weak and you're trying so hard, God said, come. Would you hear the Holy Ghost today? Would you hear the Holy Ghost today? Would you hear the Holy Ghost today? Anybody else? I know you're in here. I know you're in here. The Holy Ghost is pulling. I know he is. I'm waiting for you to come. God's waiting on you to come. He's waiting on you to come. He's waiting on you to come. That's right. That's right. He's waiting on you to come. That's right. That's right. One more. There's one more in here. I know the Holy Ghost pulling on you. One more. I know you in here. Come on. Come on. Holy Ghost said come. Come on. I'm waiting. I'm going to give you some minutes. Come on. Holy Ghost wait. He's waiting. I want y'all praying right now. Right now. Don't let the day pass. Don't let it pass. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God's forgiving God. He forgiving God. He's God. He knew you before you were born. He knew the journey you was going to have, the mistakes you was going to make. And while others died, you stayed alive. Others wind up sick in the hospital, pacemakers, dialysis. 
you still can move around. God has not rewarded you or I according to our sin. But God wants to forgive. But more importantly, he told me to tell you this morning, he wants you to forgive yourself. Stop beating yourself up. God said, I'm going to forgive you through the blood of Jesus. He don't want you to beat yourself up no more. You're not that man you used to be. The places you used to go to, God said, I'm going to take, it, I'm going to take the desire away, even to go past it. You'll take the long way around because you're not the same man you were two years ago, five years ago, ten years ago. And he kept you. He kept you. Lift your hands up.